Okay, sure. Oh, hi. I'm uh, buying a candle at the Kabbalah Center. Oh, yeah, give me a, a minute. I'm with the baby. Oh, it's um, it's this. It's called Letting Go. Let Letting. No, it's Spiritual Cleansing. Member of Mem Sofit. Mum. It's the. It says Mum. I need to sign? Yes, please give Wow, it smells great. Wow, this one's a much better smell. I don't know, it's something. Yeah, it's really good. Okay. Do you need a bag? No bag, I'm going to put it with me. Thank you so much. Yes. Rose carries everything now. Yeah, right? <laughs> For the oh, the, this is the the the, the, the calendar for for this yeah. location. Yes, and check us out on Facebook. We usually put out. I I just checked in on Facebook. Yeah, hi. I I just got a, a candle from the Kabbalah Center. It's a it's a it's it says on it something interesting. It says a spiritual cleansing, which is a, you know you could ask um, what is. A, here, the Kabbalah Center Suite. It's downtown Santa Monica. You could, you, you know, you could ask, what is a guy like me, a rationalist, uh, uh, someone who works only with uh, with uh, scientific ways of knowing, with uh, doing with, and I got the calendar for the class, doing at a spiritual place, and and what the hell um, is um, spiritual cleansing anyway, right? What what is uh, spiritual services and like that? Uh, we'll, we'll start with one word: spiritual cleansing. What uh, what am I? Uh, first of all, the candle was only uh, nineteen dollars. Came out to twenty one something in some sense. Usually, I remember one one the guy would go to Cabal Center complain that everything was seven hundred dollars. Uh, that same the same scented candle, which that says forty five hours, and I, I doubt that the other candle I had was forty five hours and I had a very good scent. So first of all, it was a rational purchase. That's number one. Number two, if you ever see me go into any place. Whether it's a shul or a church, I, I have a reason. Once you take uh, control of your life and, you know, you're, uh, people know you to be someone rational. When they see you going somewhere, they ask, what's in there? Maybe there's something interesting, even though the place doesn't look, you know, from the outside of it, looks like a place where people are looking to kill their time. But when people know you to be someone who's a follower, who has no explanations of why he's doing things and has no way of figuring it out, you know, you propose a few questions and the guy's like, I don't know and I think I'll never figure it out. It's so complicated. Like, why can't you light a fire on Shabbos or turn a, 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 a light switch on, which isn't even fire? So. So anyway, it was a rational purchase, but it was also interesting. The soul, the spirit, what, what was it, spiritual cleansing? So, a, I, I could laugh at them, but then I could, I could remember that I was raised in the same type of tradition. Tim Tumaleva HaMoyach I had, we had in Tanya, we had the... Uh, Stains on the neshama. How could you stain the neshama? No, not the actual neshama, the part, the fifth part of it. This five levels of the neshama was borrowed from an Egyptian uh, mystic. Dumped it into Tanya, wrapped it up. I was looking at the books on the bookshelf in the Kabbalah Center and I understood that they try to give you advice for your real life. It's not like they're telling you where uh, maps maps of heaven, right? Two-way streets, really did a kia, like they would say about the Mukubalim, that they knew the maps of heaven like the back of their hand, because they need it, because life sucks, so they're preparing for the afterlife, which is always better. So, in looking at these books, when you teach a child, uh, you teach a child critical thinking, you teach a child how to... Um, understand how 
things are pieced together, how, uh, wh which religion is borrowed from what, and how, which uh, philosophy is, is influenced by the other philosopher that was uh, 500 years before, and uh, things like that. So you could look at the book on the shelf and guess where they borrowed their advice, and by the end of the day, they market it like it's Kabbalah Center's advice, or it's Rabbi Berg's genius ideas of spiritual rules of engagement. Spiritual rules of, uh, in, of love and of compassion. The only, the only thing that you need to know about spirituality is how to get around it when someone gets caught up with uh, negative energy or all these concepts that people usually use when they can't explain a certain feeling or they don't want to admit a certain habit. So, it's very interesting to watch people buzz around like a fish in a fish tank, running around trying to, instead of understanding their place in this world, who they are and what they are, trying to feel their way around like you're in a dark room, the buckyball, you know. You're like, you hear a clink and then you hear, an, uh, you hear a, a noise. And you, 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 you basically have to feel your way, which takes probably five times the amount of time than when you go straight. You want to know philosophy? Go to the philosophy section. You want to know religion? Go to the religion section. You want to know theology? Theology is explaining the unknowable to the not worth knowing. So that's it. Um, that's enough for now. I had an interesting time. Uh, I'm going to read you guys off uh, in the next coming video how to join a cult. There are many good cults out there, very trendy. The people are very, uh, they dress nice and they hug you and you make, you make instant friends, right? You just have to shut up and follow. So I'm going to make a guide to how to survive joining a cult, which basically it's like telling you, I'm going to give you a list of things never to do. Never question the authority. Never ask where um, the the head, the the guy got his wife from. Never ask where he was educated. Well, maybe he was educated in electrical engineering, and you're going to ask how does electrical engineering spin off into spiritual rules of engagement and other books like God wears lipstick and things like that. So. Never ask uh, what do you plan to do with your life individually to the individual in the, in the cult. Never say what do you want to do with your personal life. It's always about the group. Never, never, uh, never question, um, always pretend you're, you're, you're understanding, but never ask basic questions like is the emperor wearing any clothes or, or uh, how does he know that? By what method does he know it? Does he know it through prophecy? Um, does he know it through um, uh, science? Science is a method. It's the best method we have in this physical universe to, under to know anything. Does he know it through uh, art? And do or does he know it through philosophy? Never, never question. Always pretend that you got it, but uh, even when you... And always pretend you're listening.